But how can you possibly lead if you're not in charge? Some of the examples we've talked about today are about people who have started something from scratch, who have shown up and said, follow me. But most people don't fit into that category. Most of us have a boss. Is it possible to lead without being on top? Does management mean that you can't also lead? I think the two key words here are authority and responsibility. That management, a culture of management teaches us that what we need in order to get other people to do what we want is authority. Give us a badge, give us a gun, give us a tower to stand upon, give us the authority to tell people what to do. In fact, authority doesn't take you very far. Authority works in the military, authority works in a few other places, but authority is rarely sufficient to get enrollment, to get people to dance on the edge of possibility. No, there's another word here that we've overlooked, and that word is responsibility. That when you take responsibility, because remember, you're given authority, but you can take responsibility. When you take responsibility, when you say, it's on me, people are eager to see what will happen next. And so, regardless of where you are in the organization, you have the chance to step up. So I'll tell you, uh, give you a couple examples from one of my favorite organizations, Acumen. Catherine Casey came up to the fellows program at Acumen. No authority, no title. She decided that it was important that Acumen have a presence in Ghana. So she got on a plane and went to Ghana with no authority, merely on spec to see what she could build. And then she did it again in South America. Joanne Tan saw that after the Blue Sweater book came out that people all around the world wanted to figure out how to help. She said, I will take responsibility for building these chapters. And then she said, I will take responsibility for building out Plus Acumen. These are the acts of people who have not been anointed, who did not ask for a lot of permission because they were willing to do all of the things we've already described. They were willing to paint a picture of the future. They were willing to say, these are the trade-offs. I can have this, but I can't have that. And mostly, they were willing to take responsibility. You may have heard me tell you the story of Nathan Winograd before. Nathan Winograd went to the SPCA in San Francisco, back when the Humane Societies and SPCAs in this country were killing four million dogs and cats every year. Nathan Winograd was not in charge. Nathan Winograd had no authority, he had no budget, he had no title. But he cared, he had a vision, he could describe where he wanted to go. He couldn't get the other humane societies to opt in, he couldn't get everyone at the San Francisco SPCA to help him, but he could reach out to the public, not to all of them, not to many of them, just enough. Enough people whose worldview made it easy for them to enroll in the journey he wanted to go on. And within 100 days, San Francisco became a no-kill shelter. No healthy animal has been killed since that day in San Francisco. Because one man didn't do it himself. He said, I'll take responsibility for this. He said, I don't need authority. I'll take responsibility. So as you think hard about where you are and why you're there, wonder what would happen if you would take what's on offer, which is responsibility.